Vamos a pasar a la próxima ponencia, que será DevOps de Atlassian Way por Daniel Carcasole. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, hola a todos, yo soy Daniel Carcasole de Atlassian y soy Support Engineer para DevTools. Y esto es todo mi español, so from now on I'm going to move to, to English, sorry for that. <laughs> Thank you. So, Today we are um, giving a look at, the, um, at the, uh, DevOps and the way Atlassian can help you implement DevOps in your um, organization. The, uh, the agenda for today, we are going to give like a brief look at the state of software nowadays. Then we are going to check steps that you can um, take to uh, achieve DevOps and what can Atlassian do to help you in these steps. So I'm sure you recognize one or more of these companies, and you believe that they do something. But actually, what they, they do nowadays is mainly software. If you don't believe me, just think about like all the self-driving algorithms for uh, electrical cars, or I don't know, Nike um, mobile um, applications, or even the fact that Starbucks sends to their coffee machines the temperature at, at which your coffee must be warmed, just remotely, without the need of human interaction. To do so, you need to think that the way software team is working nowadays has changed. Uh, just a few years ago, we were just talking about these new things called Agile and Git. But nowadays, Agile and Git are the new normal. With a, uh, we made a report in Atlassian last year uh, surveying like 17,000 customers. And we noticed that 78, 77% of them are already using Agile and when it comes to Git, it's already 78%. And as you can see, it doesn't depend on the size of the team. Before, people were saying that, OK, Agile is great. Git is great just for small teams. It's not true anymore. Every size uh, of the teams can benefit from Agile and Git. Still, Agile and Git are not the, the full solution of everything. There might be bumps on your road depending on different situations. And if you look at, this, at these questions, wait, I cannot see, the, okay. If you look at these questions and you find yourself in even, even just one of those, it means that there, you're not proceeding at the full speed you could go. Why, what's, what's preventing you to go full speed? Well, usually the, uh, the reason is because we are still humans. We are still, we need to do, to interact with each other and one of the first reaction, one or one of the first symptoms that you're not proceeding at your full speed is the fact that you're still uh, seeing silos in your, in your company. What, what do we mean by silos? Silos means that your teams work in a separate way and their main concern, their main objective is that they need to deliver whatever is a feature or operating a system so that they can just like throw the ball or throw the hot potato on the other side of the fence. And now it's someone else's problem. And what we achieve here is that, okay, developers release a feature. They need to be fast. They need to be on schedule. And then they pass it to ops. Ops have kind of no context. They do the best that they can. Something goes wrong, but ops cannot have no context. So customer service is confused. And the final thing that is the worst of it all, your customer get pissed. So you don't want that. The, uh, so the, the main thing that you want to do, the, your main concern should be, how can we remove silos and help our teams to cooperate? Well, that means that we need to go above, that we need to overcome Agile only. We need to introduce a better culture of cooperation and communication across teams. Uh, oops, sorry. So we need, uh, sorry for the, for the thing. So we need to go above that. We need to introduce communication and cooperation, remove silos, and all this new layer of communication and cooperation is what we call DevOps. So DevOps is, is a culture where developers and operations come together, trying to serve, uh, to provide like a better service and provide a unified experience to whatever is next. It can be your internal customer, it can be your employee, or it can be your external customer, the one that are paying, paying your salary at the end of the month. Uh, DevOps is based on uh, three main pillars. First one is the workflow. That is, uh, 
I wouldn't say the most important, but it's for sure an important starting point. To cooperate, to communicate, you need to have a clear definition on what you want to do and how you're going to do that. Once you did that and you created this transparency, you can enable every single layer of your, um, of your company to see what's happening and provide feedback. Again, feedback is not a bad thing. We are used to, um, to environments, traditional environments, where if your manager is coming to you, giving you feedback is usually bad news. Well, that's must, uh, we must remove this concept. Feedback is good, because feedback is helping you understand and improve. And at the same time, the, the sooner you get feedback, the sooner you, get improve, uh, you can improve. Uh, after the feedback, so the, the moment you are sure that if you're doing something not the right way or not the best way, you will receive feedback, you feel free to experiment. The experimentation permits you to fail faster, but also to learn from your failure. The moment you learn, you can retrospective and go back to workflow, improve your workflow and start again. Uh, don't think that this is something that you can implement overnight. DevOps is, is a journey. It's a journey about culture, and everyone in your company, everyone involved in the path, must be involved. Everyone must be on board to be okay in providing feedback and doing a better job. Okay, this is usually like the first step towards DevOps. This is like beautifully summarized by this, the quote from the Amazon CTO, the fact that we need to share the responsibility. So devs don't have to throw stuff over the fence and make them become someone else's problem. But if you build it, you help ops to run it. That means that you are pushed to make something better, easily maintainable. And you want to share as much information as possible so that everyone else can do the job. Otherwise, you will be forced to keep, keep it running. Well. Uh, I say to you that this is not something you can achieve overnight, this is not something easy, but as you can see, results are paying. So if you, if you push yourself in this direction, you will get uh, less time doing unplanned work because you intercept failure as soon as possible. You get like faster time to recover because you have cooperation, you have people from multiple teams that can share knowledge, experience and work. And you get like an among us uh, increment of the, the builds, the, time, the times you can deliver and deploy. Well, what does it mean for you? We say that uh, we are faster in releasing, we are faster in recovering, we are faster in providing quality, the expected quality. That means that we got a bucket, okay, sorry for this, uh, we got a, we get a bucket of engineering time that we can reinvest. Reinvest in what? Well, you pick it, but usually the, the idea is that if you have like more engineer time, you can give your engineers extra time for R&D or for developing new features. So we can, get, we can get the same amount of feature in less time or more feature in the same time. Uh, some, some of that time should be invest in providing quality. So we can test more, we can be sure that the features that we are um, releasing are at a bigger quality. And these two things together, so we have, we have faster way to deploy feature, we have better quality, that means that we are more competitive. And again, in a word, that means more money. Uh, okay, I hope that you are as excited as we are about DevOps and the culture let's see what's needed from where we are now to, to achieve full DevOps and full speed. Uh, so at Atlassian, we like to say that we, rep we are the culture and collaboration layer of DevOps. Why we, we like to say that? Because since we, our birth, we focused on um, teamwork and how to simplify and improve teamwork. And at the same time, we always um, promoted a culture of openness in the, in the company. I'm not sure if you know uh, Atlassian values, but one of my favorites is uh, actually, and it's written in our website, that is open company, no bullshit. Literally everyone in the company can stand up and say, look, 
I'm not, I don't believe, I don't buy it. I don't believe that this process is the best. This is what I will do to improve. Feedback is important. Communication is important and we need to educate our, um, our teammates, our peers, our managers on the fact that receiving feedback is good. How do we do that? We need to, uh, we have like three, uh, three steps to that. First one is, again, culture. Uh, second one is going to be practices and we will see them and then last but not least tools. So let's start with the, the culture part. Uh, again, uh, I will probably like say too many times culture and collaboration and cooperation during this presentation. But again, this is just to stress the concept that feedback is never enough. Collaboration and communication is never enough. Uh, you need to make everyone aware that we are working together. If one team fails, it's not just that team. We don't have to blame. Everyone is failing. And if we succeed, everyone is succeeding. Again, transparency is important. If, you, if everyone is able to, um, to see what's going on in the flow, everyone is able to, to give its contribution. It might not be the best contribution, but look, look at the other end. We might be losing important feedback, important um, uh, effort from people that could be the right person for that problem, and we will never know if the process is not transparent. Uh, again, com we need to work on communication, way to uh, promote constructive communication rather than blaming or uh, like trying to escape responsibilities. And finally, like we need to uh, generate uh, empathy and understanding. If I know how are this being from on the other side of the fence, I would probably try to help them do, uh, live a, an easier life by doing a better job myself. Uh, okay, and so again, cooperation, communication, uh, process improvement. In Atlassian, we keep doing that constantly and not just for developers and operation teams. We do that with every team. We cross-check, we pulse-check, the, the health status of every team. And at some point, we just decide, okay, we do that so much that we should formalize this. So we stopped down, we, uh, we sat and we started writing it down. The result is this microsite called Team Playbook, uh, where you can go and you can, um, you can download for free um, a set of books that contains uh, best practices and ways to check uh, what's the health status of every one of your teams. So we have um, monitors for different kind of teams, and we have team plays, uh, things that your teams do and, they, uh, and how they can, um, they can use to improve their performance or they can use to get even like, uh, get there if they are not. Uh, so again, ideally, um, you should run this uh, playbook with your team. You should try to understand uh, what, do you, what do you need to achieve full speed? Wh where do you want to be and what's, what's missing? Once you know where you want to go and that you have all your, um, all your team on board, actually all your teams on board to, to cooperate on that, then you can start introducing best practices. Well, best practices for DevOps are pretty easy. We start with Agile, then we move to uh, distributed version control system, and all around this, we have continu continuous integ integration and deployment. Let's uh, check them one by one. So Agile, a uh, few years ago, was like the new kid in town. Nowadays, is established. Everyone has to do Agile. And Agile, if culture is the basement for DevOps, Agile is probably at least the ground floor. You cannot achieve full DevOps. You cannot achieve full speed without mastering Agile. Why that? It's not that Agile is probably, is not the final step for, product, uh, for productivity, but one of the key things of Agile is speed. Agile provides you the, the, mind, the mindset to move as fast as possible. To, um, to organize your work in iteration and to react easily to um, unplanned things so that you can uh, reevaluate them not at the end of one year, but at the next sprint that is going to be in, I don't know, one month, six weeks, uh, depending on your, uh, on your fr um, framework. 
okay, in, in Atlassian, we have like, we like to create microsites for everything we are excited about, so Agile doesn't make any difference. If you go to this um, microsite, you will find like best practices and you, are gonna, you can uh, check your state and the, the level of Agile you are implementing uh, compared to um, best practices and suggestions. Uh, and if you feel that you are not there yet, well, you just can go back Download again, uh, download the playbook and use the playbook to measure what you are missing to achieve, let's say, full agile, full throttle. Next, we have um, distributed version control system in, in a simpler way, Git. Uh, Git is, uh, we consider Git fundamental and very important. It's not a blocker. If you don't, if you're not using Git yet, it doesn't mean that you cannot achieve DevOps, but it's going to be a bit more painful. Why that? Because again, Git is like Agile, uh, pushes you to be fast, to keep like changes at the, at the bare minimum so that you can, everyone can uh, contribute to them. Uh, we got like a beautiful example before with, with GitHub, the fact that you should keep the, uh, the changes small so that everyone can review them and you can go um, through them, improve that before you make any damage in, in production. And again, sorry for being like repetitive, we have a microsite for that. We have like, uh, and with this one, we are pretty proud of it because more than one million people just went there just to learn best practices and commands and how to use Git and introduce that in their workflow. Last but not least, we have uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, what is that? Uh, why, uh, what is limiting nowadays to achieve our full speed is usually the fact that we have a lot of repetitive actions that needs to be uh, done by humans. And most of those repetitive actions being repetitive are the perfect thing to be automated. So one of the efforts you need to undertake at some point, the moment you are confident about your flow, you're confident about the steps you need to do, is just to say, okay, from all these steps can be, we, we agree on them, they are pretty standard, let's uh, automate them. Once you automated everything that uh, doesn't need a human, uh, a human eye on it, you can really focus your engineering time to what is important. There will be always things that cannot be done completely by a machine. You need, you need a, a human checking quality, a human checking if everything is going well. Well, that is when um, you should use your engineering time. Everything else should be automated. Uh, okay, so we saw the culture, we are on board with the culture, we introduce all the practices. Still, okay, everything Agile, Git, continuous integration and deployment are just like nice, um, nice word is a nice framework, but then we need actual tools to do that, to simplify our life. So that's uh, bring us to the last part of the presentation, that is how Atlassian can help you uh, introducing tools that will simplify your DevOps adoption. Um, uh, re uh, so the, the traditional software de uh, development cycle, if you, um, if you remember, it was called, it was infamously known as waterfall. So it was a line starting, I don't know, January the 1st, doing the first um, release, December the 31st, and then iterate on that. Testing, discovering bug, going back, planning with the customer about a new release, and then you started a new year. And then by the end of that year, everything changed and your code was basically pointless. Uh, DevOps and this, uh, the new culture, Agile, is reshaping that culture. And we are uh, now imagining the development life cycle as a, a continuous loop. Uh, you can start with the planning part, and for that we have um, Confluence, that is uh, a very nice tool to like, it's like a blank canvas, it's a wiki where you can just write down all your brainstorming, start formalizing that. Once it's formalized, you can put uh, every step into Jira. Once you have everything into Jira, straight from Jira you can start coding, so you can create uh, branches in Bitbucket, do your code, uh, review, do, do pull request, and during all the process, you will have Bamboo helping you build what you're coding. So you can see as soon as possible if something that you're doing is not passing the test, is not passing the build, 
and act on that. So when you, when you reach the moment when you have to uh, deploy in production, so deploy is something that will happen constantly. You will have test environment always there. You, you want to check with your eyes what's going on. You want to test what's going on. But then when it's time to go in production and operate, you are going to be sure that everything already passed at least the bare minimum tests, everything that can be automated, so that you have time uh, to focus on stuff that is more complex, that needs, uh, again, humans and more reasoning to be uh, understood and solved. During these full steps, you have like tools that will help you. So you will have, again, Bamboo that will do the deploy for you, Jira software that is going to keep track of what you delivered. Uh, and then you will have uh, Confluence that will help you uh, define like knowledge, best practices to operate. You will have Jira service desk that is going to permit you to receive feedback. And status page that will permit you to uh, communicate with your stakeholders. So your customers or your internal customers. Uh, in, as you can see, all around the process, there is a very nice sugar code that is, again, communication. Uh, and you can use IpChat to, um, uh, to real time communicate with everyone in the company and provide feedback and uh, swarm and organize the work. Uh, so this one seems like it's very nice. It's, it was basically an excuse to show you our new logos. But now let's see uh, a practical usage of all this uh, product in the, in the right cycle. So we will start, let's say we completed like the first operation. We are now here. We are in the operate part. We have a, a web application that is running so far so good until one day that some ops engineer is drinking his coffee in the morning and she receives a notification on IpChat that something is happening. Uh, for this case, we received a notification started from PagerDuty saying that performance of our web application are not as good as expected. So first thing, after receiving the notification, some just opens a ticket in Jira service desk. Remember, it's feedback. We are operating something, it's not working well, that's our first feedback. She uh, creates a ticket, and as you can see, you can adapt the, the ticket in Jira Service Desk to whatever is your need. You can define the type, priority, uh, urgency, impact, you name it, depending on whatever you need to express. Uh, after the ticket gets created, developers get notified, again, through IpChat or any other like chat application you want to use. Uh, and then, after that, developers know that there is something that must be done. So, first of it all, communication. Let's make it clear, let's make it transparent that something is happen. So, they, they update um, status page saying that something is going on, but we are working on it. And this can be, again, external to, you, to your customers. We have status page for each one of our public services, but also internal. We have a status page for all our internal systems that we run, so that if I see that one of the tools that I use is slow today, I can, first, before bothering like developers or ops, I can go to our status page and check what's going on. I can see if there are workarounds, an estimated time for uh, recovery or anything. Uh, after this, the swarming goes um, first checking in your knowledge base, if there is anything that can be done to, um, to resolve the issue quickly. So in our case, developers find uh, an easy workaround that means like just add a new node to the cluster and this will normalize performance until we figure out a way to fix it. So exactly, next step of that is saying, okay, we fixed the instant problem, but we need to properly work on that. What do we do? We open a new ticket in Jira software, we add it to the backlog for the next print, and we link that to the service desk ticket. So at the end of the process, we found we got a problem. We acted on it. We found a, a workaround for, for now, and we know that we need to work on that, and everything is tracked. You can reconstruct the full cycle of the issue and the operation you, under, uh, the, you took to solve it. Well, okay, now everything is good, the application is running. Next print, oh, sorry, this is just 
the Jira ticket that gets created. Uh, uh, sorry, before moving on, for, uh, one thing that we have to do, there was something wrong. Maybe we did something that was not as good as could have been, or maybe it was something that we couldn't foresee, but we can prevent in the future. So next step is to do a post-mortem report. Again, Confluence is your friend in this, but you can use whatever tool fits your needs. Just remember that the, the full post-mortem is not about blaming, it's not about finding responsibles or making ads roll. It's about finding out we did something good. We solved the, the issue, so what did we do well? We can export this in other teams. We can export this in future situations. We can add this in the standard workflow. And, of course, something bad happened. So what, what could have been done better? And again, this is not to blame. It's not to find the new person to fire. It's to understand how we can constantly improve. Uh, okay, so we have our post-mortem. We know we, implement, we improved our, our workflow. Now it's time to, um, to start our next sprint. So Jennifer, our developer, picks the, um, the Jira ticket from the, uh, from the queue and creates a new branch. In Atlassian, we are like strong supporters of the feature branch um, workflow. That means that every single um, new line of code that needs to be introduced must be in a separate branch so that it, it doesn't create confusion, it doesn't create overlap, and helps you um, uh, De develop and deploy with the confidence that you're not impacting other people's work. Uh, so once the branch is created, we move to, uh, to Bitbucket and we start coding. Uh, while we code, we might, uh, we, we might have like Bamboo or any other continuous integration tool that is gonna make the tests for us, that is gonna check if, the, if there is anything wrong. The moment we are confident on the on the release on the uh, sorry on the code we um, we delivered, then it's time to create the pull request. Uh, as as we already are today, pull requests are an extremely important part of, of your workflow. If there is one thing that you want to introduce and you want to start from, well, I will suggest you to start from pull request. Why that? Because pull requests help collaboration, help you build that mindset on the fact that uh, you need to be, um, everyone needs to cooperate and are, are also a best way, the best way to mentor new people because they can see what needs to be done for that kind of um, problems which code is made. Uh, after that, we go back to Bamboo, everything looks green. So it's time to merge the pull request and have our, um, our code in the main branch. Again, you can see everything. You can follow all the cycle from, from Jira. After that, our release manager, once so that everything is solved, can just push a button in, uh, in Jira and make the release. Well done. Our fix is in production. So. By introducing DevOps, Atlassian saw like a huge increase in, um, in release speed and in uh, confidence and quality. And that is, those are like the, the, the results. We increased our builds by 10 times. We uh, ach achieved greater velocity in delivering new teams and we got like some extra time that we can give to our developers to do innovation week, to do hackathons. That means new features for free. Uh, but apart from that, the moment you are confident that um, you are not breaking stuff, that every part of the step is controlled, that receive feedbacks, you gain more confidence. So you know that you can be fast, you are confident that you're not destroying anything in production, you gain more independence, so you can achieve your full speed. Uh, this is the, the same before, Atlassian doesn't complete the full cycle, we, but we integrate with other key uh, tools for key actors of DevTools. So I just have like one slide with more logos. As you can see at every step, if you have pre-existing pre um, tools in your, um, in your organization that you rely on, you don't need to change completely from there or you don't have to drop them. 
Atlassian integrates with them, and this level of integration gives you the freedom to pick the right tool for you. That doesn't have to be necessarily Atlassian, but Atlassian can help you com make them communicate. Uh, so, just to summarize what we saw today, so last, last slide is just, remember, first step, culture. I said it once again. Uh, it's the most important part. It's the basement without which you cannot achieve DevOps. After that, focus on, on your speed. Try to understand what is preventing you to achieve full speed and uh, act on that by uh, reiterating your workflow, improving that. That is going to give you faster resolution time. And uh, with the, the time you gain, you can spend that in Re reworking your workflow and better prioritize what's really important for you. Q&A is going to be postponed to after, but we actually have, like, I believe, coffee break right now. So thank you very much.